Jackie, the book of Esther is uh, actually it's pretty well known for a like funny little story that doesn't have God in it, right? It's uh, uh, it's it's a ve- it's a very Jewish book, right? It's like actually about Jews in a way that in the diaspora in the diaspora, or like it's not set. But let's talk about. Uh, Give us the, the background setting for the story of Esther. Well, where, where and when are we? Well, so it's set in the time of Xerxes, mm-hmm. which is, you know, which Xerxes, I don't know. Right. Um, in, you know, with the presumption that Jews are sort of um, spread all over Persia. Um, and this is the setting. Right? They're fully, or not fully, but in some sense assimilated into life. Um, in Persia. Right, it's funny, it's a story, it's a story, it's not a story about exile, actually, because like the exile has ended by now, right? There's, there's Israelites living in Israel. They're doing their own thing. That's not, that's not what this story is about. This is about the Israelites who, you know, like left during the Babylonian exile and have just been living a life elsewhere. Yeah, they, they live in they live in the diaspora, so yeah. it is a kind of a diaspora tale. It's also um, just structurally kind of um, uh, different than uh, a lot of the other short stories that um, we find in the writings, because uh, there's actually not very much dialogue. Um, most of the other stories uh, you can sort of um, see as being very dialogue centric. This is a story that is heavy on description, heavy um, on um, just outlining of, uh, you know, a very prominent narrator's voice um, as opposed to the other stories. Heavy on description. What's it describing? I mean, it's describing, a, you know, in almost a satirical way, yeah. um, court life. Um, and uh, in, in that sense, it kind of, uh, draws from other biblical works. Um, you could see how it draws from, um, you know, Joseph. Sure. Um, you can see how it um, it draws uh, it draws from Daniel, um, which also, you know, um, kind of diaspora life. So, uh, so in that sense, it has those elements. Um, it also uh, has some like funny allusions to biblical, um, so while it is a, you know, a Jewish tale in diaspora, it is so clearly still biblical. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though God is nowhere in this story, uh, you see um, the perpetuation of old feuds <laughs> into this story. I mean, the, you know, the story of uh, Saul, Saul losing the kingship in 1 Samuel 15. Yep. Uh, um, you know, you you get that story just sort of in the reincarnated characters of Mordecai and, you know, Mordecai, a Benjaminite, yeah. sort of like, yeah. you know, Saul's descendant. Mm-hmm. Um, and Haman, um, you know, the, the king's vizier or, you know, what have you. Um, as, as the descendant of King Agog of the Amalekites. Yeah. And so you have the same sort of um, circumstance which led Saul to lose the kingship, and now we're going to see this, you know, redux. Yeah. Um, done again, and this time once and for all. Mm-hmm. So a politi- it's a, sat- a satire of court life, as you, you said. Um, I think it's a funny book. Like, I think it's meant to be a funny book. I don't, it's not ha- laugh out loud, ha ha funny. Um, but it's, it's hard for some people actually, some people find it weird to think about the Bible as being funny. Yeah, um, you know, I, I think that humor is one of those things that's, you know, just extremely subjective. Um, you know, there are things that people think are funny that I would, you know, dad jokes, whatever. Um, I'd be curious to hear what in the book of Esther you think is funny. Like, what are the things that make it comedy? Yeah. Uh, I mean, so there's a few things. It's, it's a story, it's a big comeuppance story. And like, comeuppance is funny. Uh, we might not, you know, we might like recoil a little bit at the comeuppance that ends with like 
mass murder. Not great. But I think they would have found it, like, it's because, because it's fantasy, right? Like, it's escapist fantasy. Um, Certainly. And, I mean, to, to see, you know, Mordechai be able to take precisely the place of Haman, um, and then with that background of, you know, of, you know, Saul and King Agag, right? Um, but also to see, you know, the, um, you know, how Mordechai gets to, you know, serve, you know, what is it? Revenge is a, is a dish best served cold, mm -hmm. um, that, that, uh, Haman had wanted Mordechai to bow down. And this, you know, this is, you know, a, a beautiful kind of like fantasy of, no, I will not bow down to you. And more, all the more so, um, I'm going to get you to be, you know, a, a figure of public humiliation. Yeah. So there's, th there's, that, there's that sort of reversal aspect that I think plays into the, into the comedy. There's also like, what feels to me like legitimate satire of the, the bureaucratic nonsense of the Persian administration, right? I think we're, we're, we're both pretty well aware of this, but like, it's, real, it's a story about like, who is actually in charge? Well, certainly not the king. Right, it's not the, right, it's not the king. It seems to be uh, like the, the clerical staff, right? Or even, I mean, or even or, the documents themselves. Yes, yeah, right, the disembodied words of the documents, right? Like, where where the seal ring you know can be worn by anyone whoever has it is the one who's in charge yeah right I mean it's right you know <laughs> it's a story of a story of a king who says stuff and then people are like I, sorry I got a piece of paper that says otherwise and like, I can't do anything there's a piece of paper right um, and and you know there's there's and it's a piece of paper that is that is Haman's uh, uh, come up and also right like yeah. and, th and then they looked through the records and they found the thing and it's like well also the you know that there's this hilarious scene where uh the king can't sleep right and so like you know the the cure for his insomnia is having his you know his annals read to him um <laughs> so it's like you know like he'll get he'll be able to get to sleep once they read to him what's been going on in, in his kingdom yeah basically i mean whatever I still can sometimes read Chronicles if I need a nap. Right? Like, that's my aunt. Like, okay, I understand it. Uh, anyway, it's, it is, I think it is meant to be a funny book. I think there are a number of, and it's not alone, right? I think Jonah is a comedy. I think that parts of the Jacob story are comedy. But, but Esther is a... Um, Job is a dark comedy. <laughs> a very dark comedy. Uh, but, but Esther, as a, as a satire, it, 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 we're not just identifying, like, you know, an aspect of its, of its presentation, but also probably part of its purpose, which is, again, like, satire flourishes particularly in you know, dire circumstances. Yeah, in, in, I mean, let's be more specific, in the midst of political oppression, yeah. right? So this is where satire really comes into its own. Um, uh, so, so perhaps there we have a hint as to, you know, what are the messages of the work or the circumstances that give rise um, to the popularity of such a work. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's also notable that, you know, beyond the fact that this is, you know, part of this, this is read and sort of acted out in the community um, in, uh, in Judaism um, on the holiday of Purim, which it actually like mentions mm -hmm. um, as <laughs> when you should read the story. Yeah. Um, that uh, it, you know, this this work, this story gave rise to so many different plays throughout um, diasporic Jewish history. So, um, you know, Purim spiels, if you will, to borrow uh, anachronistically a Yiddish term. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, in Judeo-Provençal, in Yiddish, in uh, you know, in Ladino, um, yeah. and so I think the fact that in its reception it was very clearly understood to be um, satire um, played out, um, you know, a topsy turvy carnivalesque work um, speaks to something that's sort of like inherent to it. And so it, it's it's worth then sort of dissociating even as it's maybe impossible to do, dissociating that part of the text from Purim, right? Which is to say, I think for lots of people, 
oh yeah, Esther is like, it's the story that gives us Purim, which is the fun festival where everyone dresses up and lots of people get a little drunk and like... Well, I mean, you're supposed to be so drunk that you cannot tell the difference between the hero and the, um, the, and the villain. villain in the story. Yeah, which thankfully, I think most people don't do anymore. Sure, but, sure. But, you know, so like the story ends with like Purim and it becomes like, Esther becomes read as, oh, that's the Purim book, like as if it's a book about the holiday. Yeah. Uh, do, you think the stuff, do you think the Purim stuff is a later addition to the text? I mean, I think there's a lot of evidence that there have been various additions to the text um, uh, throughout, throughout the ages. So um, I, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. Right, but it's, it's useful then in that, in that sense to, to think about like, this was a, a story that serves, served and serves a purpose in you know, contexts of oppression uh, or political oppression. Um, and, and it continues to have sort of like currency. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it continues to be relevant and meaningful because Jews continue to be oppressed. Right. Uh, and in, in a sense, the, the, the ability, almost what the text tells us, the ability to celebrate Purim fully is almost a sign of like, we, we came out the other side. <laughs> but like, you couldn't, you couldn't celebrate Purim in Persia. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, but the, you know, for the, the circumstances in which, I don't know, in you know, contemporary 21st century America, you know, Jews in synagogues can have parades of kids in costumes. That's like a rebuke to the very, to the context in which the thing was, was created. We, and I think, and I almost think that's what the attachment of, this, of the festival to the book itself is suggesting, right? Like, there's that a we've come out the other side. It's a story about coming out the other side and, this, and the celebration of a festival for that purpose. Which is like the upending of the elements of the story. Exactly. That really lend themselves to that kind of reading. Yeah, so it be, I mean, it, 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 there's a reason it's a popular book, right? It speaks to people on both sides of the, of the crisis, as it were. 